everyone, it's Mike. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I review nootropics and I talk about personal development. And during this video, we're gonna talk about oxyrastime, which is a nootropic that I've been consistently using for about seven years. My typical dosage is something like 750 milligrams across three times per day. So let this video be your guide. We're gonna go over what is oxyrastatam. We'll talk about my personal experience. Of course, we'll address some of the benefits. We'll talk about the side effects. I'll go over some commonly asked questions about oxyrastatam and then stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll go over what nootropics can go nicely with oxyrastatam to make a nice stack. Let's get right into the video, but firstly, be sure to subscribe and I really appreciate your feedback. Be sure to drop a comment and I'll make sure that I get back to you sometime soon. All right, so what is oxyrastam? It's a water-soluble nootropic. It's different than anorastam in that you can just ingest it with water versus a meal, and it fits in that rastam family. What is the rastam family? It's a class of nootropics that a lot of people are using to improve their general cognition, meaning their memory, their alertness, their energy levels, their motivation, and oxyrastam, it does all that. So it is known to be five times as potent as paracetam. Paracetam is talked about because it's just been around for the longest period of time. Paracetam goes back to the 70s, where in that there were studies done showing that it helped a lot of people with Alzheimer's or some sort of dementia just to recover and have better overall cognition. It's a very unique nootropic in that there are really no side effects to be too concerned about. I always say across my channel that the stronger the nootropic is, the stronger the side effects are as a result. And it's nice to have the peace of mind that you can consistently take oxyrastam without the concern of any side effects or anything bad happening long term down the road. So as we look into the benefits, and this is from examine.com, you can see that there's an improvement with cognitive decline. Unfortunately, with most of the studies, they are done with respect to elderly people or people who have some sort of cognitive issue, whether it's Alzheimer's, whether it's memory loss or dementia. There's not a lot of evidence in younger people, like people like me in my 20s or people in their 30s, which is the group of people that are naturally most likely to take oxyrastam right now, just given that it's only gained popularity recently. As well, it's gonna help you with your memory. It's gonna help you with your well-being. There are studies done just showing that it improves subjective well-being amongst people, meaning they were just in a better mood, but that's what's gonna happen with stimulants or anything slightly stimulating, which improves your focus. You're gonna feel better. You're not gonna have distracting thoughts and you're not gonna have a racing mind like you typically would. As far as my personal experience goes with oxyrastam, I absolutely love this stuff. I I initially started taking it about seven years ago where I was looking for something to help me with my studies and I noticed that it helped me as a result just with everything. I grew in different areas of my life. It helped me with my fitness. It helped me to work on other side hustles and I really just enjoyed the nootropic altogether. I initially started taking paracetam prior to oxyrastam and I like paracetam a little bit and that made me just gain interest and curiosity in the other racetam. So what initially appealed to me back then was pramaracetam, anaracetam, and oxyrastam. What makes oxyrastam unique to the other racetams is that from the moment you ingest it with some water, with a good choline source, you can immediately feel it. Like your priorities come top of mind and you just know it's working. Whereas the other racetams, you're a little bit uncertain and you have to cycle on and off of them for a quite a long period of time before you actually conclude that they are working. Anaracetam, for example, it was after maybe two or three cycles where I noticed it was doing something, but oxyrastam just immediately again, you feel mentally refreshed and almost kind of like a nap in a pill similar to rhodiola rosea. So there have been times when I've taken time off of oxyrastam, but I've only done that because I wanted to somewhat reset my tolerance. It's commonly asked, do you need to cycle oxyrastam? I would say yes, because as you take it day after day continuously, you notice that the alertness effects do start to diminish to some extent. And with me, one of the regrets I had was that I should have taken a little bit more time off because what so was with it, the only time I was really taking off of it is when I was either on vacation or when I ran out of the product. So if you're gonna take it, then make sure firstly to use it responsibly, start with paracetam first, and then introduce oxyracetam and the other racetams in your stack be sure to cycle it. I would say that you're best off doing it something like three weeks on, one week off, or maybe four weeks on followed by two weeks off. Because if you don't, then believe me, the effects will just diminish. All right, and let's talk about the recommended dosage, which is where I believe that a lot of people go wrong. If you don't notice the results from oxyracetam, it's most likely that you're either not taking it consistently or you're not taking it 
in the right way, which is with a choline source. With oxyrostime, you're just using more choline in a more efficient way, which makes it necessary for you to use supplemental choline. You can do this by eating a choline-rich diet, which, is, which involves eating a lot of eggs, but the best way of doing it is to having it alongside a choline source. So for me personally, the way I'm using it in my stack is 750 milligrams three times per day, along with a choline source. My favorite is Alpha GPC again of 300 milligrams three times per day. So each dose is going to be 750 milligrams of oxyrostam with 300 milligrams of Alpha GPC. Uh, my favorite vendors is NootropicsDepot.com, although I'm sure there's other good ones as well. Check out the description box below. I'll try to find some good links as far as where you could purchase it. With the rest times, they're a little bit different than the other nootropics in that you have to take them consistently to notice the results. So I'm talking, take it for at least two weeks until you see the results. You don't have to take an attack dose. It's not necessarily like creatine, but what's so is just make sure you're hitting a dose of at least twice per day. I take three. You don't necessarily have to take three. Ideally, something like 750 milligrams along with the choline source twice per day for about two weeks in order for you to start seeing the results. You may be like me in that you have a low tolerance to the stuff and you feel the stimulation, but you most likely won't. Some signs that it is working is that after a few weeks, your memory will be better, your energy level, your motivation will be better. You'll find that to some extent you start to neglect other areas of your life that are outside of the realm of like becoming successful and being productive. Like you'll find some interests that you typically had before may not interest you so much like your social life or sports or hobbies. You're just really engaged in your work and that's a great feeling and it's a fun part to go through in your life. Some other neat indicators that oxyrastam is working is that music sounds a lot nicer. You almost hear the music on like a different dimension. And with respect to the stimulation, it's not stimulating like caffeine and that caffeine, you really feel like that peak. You feel mentally and physically energized. Whereas oxyrastam, you don't notice the physical energy, not like phenylprostam, just more like mentally, you feel a little bit refreshed. Again, your priorities come top of mind and you're just able to work in a lot more efficient manner. Before you do go ahead and, and just discount oxyrastam and say the stuff doesn't work, just I would really recommend you look at your dosage and you make sure that's done right. You're taking it at least twice per day consistently. With the racetams, you're not going to really notice if they're doing anything unless you're engaged in some sort of high stress activity. Like if you have exams and you're really studying hard or if you're an entrepreneur and it's crunch time, you have some sort of deadline or, or a project which is due soon, that's a time when you'll notice them working. Otherwise, it's pretty much just a waste of your money and it's a waste of your time. All right, let's talk about the side effects. Well, the side effects of oxyrastam are just that it's somewhat stimulating in that, in that it can interrupt your sleep. It's not been my experience, but as well, I'm not really taking it close to bed. Like my latest dose of oxyrastam will be something like seven to eight o'clock p.m. So that's the only one which comes up. I, I have seen some reports of people reporting brain fog, but if you are having brain fog, then it's likely that you're just not taking it with a good choline source. Where a lot of people go wrong, again, is they don't have enough choline, or sometimes they're just using choline by tartrate. I'm not really a believer in choline by tartrate. I don't think it does anything, and, and it does not compare to CDP choline or alpha GPC. Fortunately, with the brain fog, it's not like it's gonna happen later on after a week of use. If you notice the brain fog, it'll just be within the first couple of days, so therefore you know I don't respond well to it and I should stop taking it. Some commonly asked questions about oxyrastam are should I take it over another specific type of racetam? I would say if you're only to buy a couple of racetams, then I would say prostam and oxyrastam are the best ones. Prostam is just good in that it's a nice foundation. I find it works somewhat synergistic logistically what the other racetams like you won't notice much from prastam when you're taking it by itself but when you combine it with other racetams that's really where it does have its magic if you're somebody that is in sales like myself or you're engaged in a lot of conversations or presentations then anorastam would be a much better option as it can help you with anti-anxiety and it really does help most i find with verbal fluency lastly when it comes to building a good overall stack with oxyrastam and if you were to ask what other nootropics can go well with it as I mentioned, the other racetams and as well the adaptogens because with the racetams, they're really gonna help you with your focus, with your motivation, with being more productive, but they're not really gonna help you to fight off fatigue as well as some of the adaptogens are. When I say adaptogens, that means nootropics that can help you to fight stress. So the popular ones would be ashwagandha, KSM 66, Bacopa Minieri, and Rhodiola Rosea. Those are my favorite three, and what they're really gonna do is just to fight off fatigue. So you'll be able to take your racetams to get a lot of work done, and then use the adaptogens strategically because they're gonna help you again to improve your stress resilience, like to have you hold a higher capacity of stress. I have noticed that 
when it comes to stronger stimulants like modafinil, like phenylparacetam, those are things that you're not gonna be taking every day. They're more like nootropics you would just use here and there when you really, really need them. And I find that those nootropics, they really just overpower oxyracetam and they will make your oxyracetam pretty much useless. Like because oxyracetam is mainly used to help you with energy, your focus, your motivation. Modafinil, it does all of that already, so there's no need for oxyracetam. So my final thoughts on oxyracetam are that it's a great nootropic, it acts as a mild stimulant, it's gonna promote a positive mood, it's good for relaxation, and it's really good in a social setting. Really hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe, comment below. I'll look forward to seeing you all next time, and if there's any nootropic you'd like me to review in a future video, then let me know, and I'll see you all soon.